this is Michelle at Covermaker Books, and this is Mouse, the bookstore kitten. Say hi, Mouse. For those of you that remember the letters, we've read letters that people wrote to Squeaky during the shutdown. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to read to Mouse, and we're going to read him Squeaky's stories. The first nine lives of Squeaky, the bookstore cat. These books are available at Covermaker Books. So we're going to start with the first one. And the first one is by Christian Beverly, and it is a wonderful story, and it is called Squeaky and the Little Horses. Cats were created with magic, or so they were told. It was handed down through the litters born, a constant hum that told cats that they were special and that while they were capable of ruling the world, it was more fun to let others do it for them. Magic flowed from their whiskers to their toes and through their tails. It was a soft magic instead of the loud, dramatic variety. It allowed them to disappear and reappear without a sound. They could jump from high heights and land on their toes with only a mild soreness ah, 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 <laughs> lingering. It allowed them to stay as they were never bending to become as they were never bending to become different. The only catch to the magic was following the rules. The store was different, Squeaky thought. Often Squeaky felt like the ruler of his bookstore. He remembered the tale of the first cats, sorry, adorned in golden jewelry and bowed to. It gave them the precision to jump and grab, to watch without having to move. He often felt like the ruler of his own castle with a revolving door of not subjects, but equals. Equals that always eventually found their own castle. Magic, the loud and dramatic type, called to Squeaky, but he refused to answer it. He didn't like the loud and dramatic unless it was his own voice. He talked to the ghosts when alone at night, but always made sure he padded down the aisles, meowing to make sure the humans had left. He wasn't embarrassed of magic, he just didn't want to make it known in the way it could be. Cats were told the stories of their magic and the stories of the fall of fallen magic. Humans meant well with their hearts, but power had the ability to corrupt, and one of the most stark reminders of the whole ordeal was the platypus. What the creature originally looked like had been lost in translation, but the happily beaver duck creature was a reminder of magic gone wrong and forgotten, especially the loud and dramatic kind. It spoke in screams instead of whispers. It broke doors instead of tapping. And it frightened him when he thought of what could happen, particularly at night. Today was a new day, and one of the special humans had brought in a tote. Squeaky's tail curved over his back as he moved to smell it. It was different than books, even though he knew his pack of special humans spoke in books. Today, however, the tote was filled with horses, plastic horses.